Thank you, uh, Last Count Corla. And to ask the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform to position regarding the review of military allowances for members of the Defence Forces and if you will make a statement on the matter. Minister, two minutes. The Commission was established to advise Government on public service remuneration policy. In the current phase, the second phase of the Commission's work, it was tasked by its terms of reference to undertake an examination of whether and to what extent there are difficulties in recruiting and retaining staff in key areas of the public service identified in its first report. The Public Service Pay Commission has adopted a modular approach to its work programme for its present exercise. As the Deputy will be aware, the first module was published by the Commission in August of 2018 and deals with issues relating to nurses, midwifery, non-consultant hospital doctors and hospital consultants. The Commission is act currently engaged in work in relation to the Defence Forces. I understand that written submissions have now been received and then on the 5th of March oral presentations were made to the Commission by both parties. The uh, Commission have now indicated to me that they expect to have their work completed by the end of quarter two of 2019. So we're in the final phase of getting the work done um, and um, I believe that we should have the work uh, in place and I hope published as we move into May and into early June. First supplementary, Deputy Board. Thank you, uh, Last Count Corla. I would welcome the fact that the report is progressing and this is uh, a very urgent issue because uh, we've seen a number of concerns raised from uh, and by members of the Defence Forces. Uh, I attended a Respect and Loyalty uh, march out here outside Dáil Éireann with the Chairman of the Parliamentary Party for Fine Gael, Deputy Martin Hayden, and we heard the concerns that families have in relation to conditions, in relation to their duty allowance, and also in terms of uh, the proportion of the uh, Defence Forces that are claiming family income supplement. But I do know that uh, obviously there's a huge pressure on the state in terms of all these various calls within the public sector, but I welcome the Minister Minister making a commitment that uh, the report will be published uh, by quarter two and I would hope that he would keep on track to ensure that it is and hopefully that uh, in some way we can respond back to the challenges that are faced. And we've seen a former Minister for Defence uh, on the National Airwaves uh, last week uh, pointing out in terms of the uh, numbers of our Defence Forces is well off target at the moment, of our 9,500 target uh, for our Army, our Naval Service and our Air Corps. I think it's very important that we do monitor that closely and do everything we possibly can under the current fiscal constraints to get uh, our Defence Forces back up to that level. Minister. Um, and we are, uh, and uh, as I said to you, they, they are the timings uh, in which the Public Pay Commission uh, should be able to present and complete their work. Uh, we are doing other things, though, in relation to how we can uh, support our Defence Forces. As Deputy Burke will be aware, all of the work now that we have on the way in relation to wage restoration, in relation to ensuring that by the end of the Public Service Stability Agreement, that low and middle income wor workers have seen their income either uh, uh, be restored or be on the way to restoration. That applies to the Defence Forces as well. We've increased the amount of expenditure for new equipment by the Defence Forces by 25 million euro. So we, we are putting in place measures uh, to support the development of equipment for the Defence Forces. And new, I know that a new naval vessel, for example, is uh, due, to be, uh, due to arrive soon. We have made a lot of investment in that area. Uh, the Defence Forces participate in all of the changes of the Public Service Stability Agreement. But as I said, we have a specific piece of work that will be complete soon. Have you another question? Yeah. Thank you, Alas Kankorla. And I would say I genuinely acknowledge the huge work and effort that has made by our Defence Forces in peacekeeping missions abroad, sometimes under very uh, dangerous circumstances, and also in terms of supporting our state agencies within the state. And uh, that is not taken for granted. And uh, it's very important that we do progress as a government to keep supporting our Defence Forces, to ensure that we are doing all in our power that they are getting paid what they deserve and they get the conditions that they deserve because conditions is one of the uh, key issues that has also been raised in terms of how they perform their daily duties and uh, I would hope that we do see uh, this report progressing in uh, quarter two and I look forward to its delivery to government. Now we have a few supplementaries which I'll take but they have to be very brief. <coughs>
on on this, and I just want to ask the Minister, has he any proposals to improve and provide rent allowances to serving soldiers, and uh, has he any proposals, for instance, to help uh, soldiers who have maybe completed one or two terms of duty and contract uh, with help on uh, deposit to actually buy a house? One of the reasons people are leaving the forces is they can't pay the rent okay. and they can't buy Deputy a house. Durkan, Deputy Durkan, and then the Minister. I, I, I also compliment the Minister on his efforts to, to bring about restoration uh, in terms of pay and conditions in the Defence Forces. But in particular, I would raise the question about the, the, the need to reassure the members of the Defence Forces that the, the uh, report uh, is imminent and that it would be positive, because it is not in, in the interest of the Defence Forces, certainly it is in the interest of their morale, that they have a question mark over their future, and particularly when there are competing demands in the, the job market. It is very easy for the Defence Forces to be ignored, and uh, having particular regard to the fact that they are more likely to be called upon than any other branch of the public services in an emergency, I would ask that that report be, be be brought forward insofar as can be done in order to re reassure the defence forces. So we, uh, all my colleagues uh, are correctly uh, recognising the role of our defence forces and the contribution that they make to the, to the state, and they're right to do so, and I understand why. But we also have to be conscious of the fact that we have uh, uh, other public servants that are called upon a time of emergency. Uh, to, to use the approach there that Deputy Durkin did there in terms of those who work in our health services, those who work in the guards, those who work in uh, supporting our defence forces in their work. They are also public servants. They are also covered by the Public Service Stability Agreement. And we do have to be fair to everybody, which is why the Public Service Pay Commission and the way it works is so valuable. Uh, Deputy Burton has asked me there to make a number of commitments in relation to what we are going to do. As the Deputy will know, if I was to make those commitments now, there would be no point having a Public Service Pay Commission. Their role is to inquire into these issues and make recommendations to me. Um, and that is what they are doing at the moment. And in response to what Deputy uh, uh, Burke said a moment ago, uh, I can confirm that that report is imminent and I hope will be delivered in the timings I have just indicated.